Okay. <clears throat> uh, Alright. <sighs> Hello everybody. Um today we are making the mini backpack. I'm gonna go ahead and start on my lining since I've got a black colored thread in it at the moment. Hi Becky. Hi Stephanie. Hi Arlene. Hi Christy. Hi Trish. Hello Olivia. Hi Angie. Um, so I, I wanted to show you guys how I keep track of my projects. So I have my friend Tammy who works for me, um, works with me, sorry. And yeah, Shaleen, that would be great. Uh, oh, you're already a moderator actually. <laughs> Hello, Ashley and Target. Hey, Kelly. Well, Charlie, I will still be there later. Um, so I use um, these little bins, kind of like this one over here, to put all my projects in. And I saw at the sewing retreat, my friend Angie had this, um, they call it a washi tape organizer from, hi Martha, uh, from Michaels. And they're these cute little cases. There's like 20 or so within this giant pack. And I was like, oh, these would be perfect to, she organized her hardware in them. And I was like, oh, these will be perfect for putting the hardware that I am, yeah, that would be great. Um, all the projects I'm working on, I can put the hardware, zippers, whatever, in this little bin, put it inside the drawer, and then everything's together. Like, I, I'm not going to lose anything. I've got this little bin um, and I, I just thought it was super cool. So plus it was on sale for like 20 bucks at Michael's. I, I had to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the zippered pocket. Like I said, I've got my black thread in the machine and I'm working with a dark colored lining. So it'll just be easier. Hi, Pamela. Hi everybody. Uh, so I'm going to start with just a 7 inch zippered pocket. I think you could also just do a little 6 inch one and that would fit well too. I like to mark it on the fold and then fold my other piece in the opposite direction. Hi Sharon. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see that better now. Um, and then I just line up the fold marks, and then you can clip it in place. I'm not gonna um, make this too chatty. I want it to be a good reference video so I don't have to film another one. Um, Angie, the pattern is from Deedlebug Handmade pattern, Deedlebug sewing patterns. I'm sure someone can find a link, and I'll definitely update the video later with one. Um, but this will be. I don't know, I've, I've made close to 10 of these already, and I actually just sold one to my friend Brittany last night. Um, it was one that I kind of wanted to keep, so it helped me from keeping it, and I know that I can get it from later, too. Hi, Allison. All right, so I'm just gonna cut that open. Oh, hi, Caddy. That's awesome. So I'm just gonna cut that open. Ooh, a 10 pack. That is perfect. Hi, Kimberly. I am so terrible at like being organized, so I'm getting better. All right, so I'm turning this through. Hi, Donna. And then I'm going to press it with a lot of steam. Zipper while I'm over here as well. Okay. 
So here's my zippered pocket. Um, and the zipper pocket piece I'm using is actually from the Bonnie bucket bag. It's, um, I have one of the template pieces for it and it's literally just the standard pocket that I use for everything now, if it's gonna be seven inches anyway. So laying my zipper in place. start top stitching where the zipper pull is along the top. Anytime you make a slip pocket like this, you could choose to omit the zipper and just make it a slip pocket as well if you're a little scared or new to zippers. Grab my thread zap. I don't know if it's my like new fuses or what maybe I need to change the batteries already but I feel like this isn't getting as hot as it used to I don't know it's probably the different fuses it's like not it's batteries it's batteries all the way I know my sign still says Elaine I have not had a chance to change it. Uh, Pamela, they're under sewing merch, sewing merch uh, on my website. Oh, Amanda, I'm so glad you like it. Uh, my friend Alyssa is the one who, hi McKinley, hi Karen. Uh, my friend Alyssa was the one who was like, oh my gosh, you should do rainbow pens. Because she'd been saying I should do pens for a while. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she was like, rainbow pens. And I was like, done. And I think I literally found a supplier and ordered that night. <laughs> hey, Sandra. Um, so if you guys saw my video on this in so whatever I have changed things slightly since then so not too much but just a little bit um, and it kind of made it easier even easier but I think I can sew this bag now in like an hour and a half so we're gonna try and get that done so I'm gonna fold this under and steam Running out of steam. I'm gonna leave my zipper pocket open and set that in my ready pile. What else is ready? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the lining. I am not adding any kind of pocket on the front of this bag because um, I've kind of centered my fabric as well as I want it. Um, I could have added like a slip puck. I don't know. I just wanted it to be nice and simple. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch my thread over. Caddy, it's so true. I kind of like to keep them that way as well. So I've got my zipper back, my zipper front. I'm going to keep those four pieces together, my lining and my exterior. <laughs> Yay, Sharon, that's so exciting. Okay, and then I've got my outer pockets and my side panels. I'm gonna keep those all together with my zipper panel. So I feel like staying organized is one of the hardest things about bag making, but it also makes it a lot faster if you do stay organized. Hello, Vita. So I'm gonna start with my back panel, which I'm using vinyl. 
and then I've got my foam piece separate. So I'm not going to fuse those together or base them together until I get everything I want on my back panel. Um, so I've got my two strap connectors and all of these pieces are going to be vinyl. Um, Angie, I, I honestly don't know that I would say it's easier. Um, I have not made a Kalani in a while, but I know that I want to soon. Um, I feel like this bag is more what people are looking for. Yeah, no, I am terrible. Hi Frank, I do have a video about my machine. Okay, so now I'm just taping the back accent panel, the back grab handle, those two strap connectors, and then the two vinyl straps. Um, and I will say that the very first time I made this, I was super confused on how the back straps work, but I actually really love them now that I've done it and kind of want to do it on all the backpacks ever because it's so easy. <clears throat> okay, so here is the back vinyl strap. This goes on the top. So this is like what goes around your shoulder. <laughs> hey, CJ. Um, I mean, we can make anything really. I'm just good at making burgers, so I don't care. Oh yeah. This bag would be really cool with a clear vinyl thing. Um, so let me just really quick tell you how I personally would add it. So let's say you've got an all vinyl front. Um, what you could do is just make, um, hmm, cause you'd want it to kind of, hmm. Hmm. I'll have to think about it, but I definitely, I want to do it. That's true. Yeah, give it some thought. <laughs> like I saw it in my head, I was thinking just kind of add like a vinyl slip pocket even, but then it would be hard to get down to them. Yay, oh, I'm so glad. Oh yeah, I wanted to change my thread color. Tee hee. Right, I'm gonna use a cream colored thread. Should have enough bobbins. Watch me not have enough bobbins. It's fine. Oops. Okay, bye. Not today, Bobbins. <laughs> it's my favorite. I think what I love the most is like when I made that up, everyone I told it to was like, oh, should I understand that? And I'm like, it's funny, you guys, it's funny. So thank you guys for enjoying it as much as I enjoy it. Okay, so really quickly, I'm threading my machine and then I'll get to top stitching everything I just taped together. Like it's, it's funny. It is quite intense to thread it, but at this point for me, it's like my hands know what to do, even if my brain doesn't. 
So I think in my Juki video where I like talk about my machine, I think I threaded it wrong because I was overthinking it. I've had a few people say like, yeah, that's not how it's done. I'm like, oops. <laughs> Hi, Inga. Yeah, Alyssa. I, I should have popped one in. That's my bad. Okay, so for the back accent strap cover, I'm just folding those raw edges into the center. Um, you don't necessarily have to make the edges butt up against each other. I leave a little bit in between. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half and top stitch. Stitch length set to five. You don't want to sew? What's, what's happening there? Is my bobbin not? I think it's my bobbin. Come on, bobbin, not today. I know it's crazy. Like, I. There we go. Try that again. There we go. So if your machine is having issues, always check the bobbin first. down each edge of the strap. Repeat. Yay, Amanda! It, they are super soft and I'm really glad that I could uh, offer those mostly affordably. Um, so thank you guys to everyone who ordered one. It means the world to me. I also love seeing everybody order pens. I'm like, oh, I get to be with you when you mark stuff out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the tops so they're nice and straight since they are raw edged. Um, I do have some shirts that say, no, I don't. They, um, the shirts I have say, oh, Helen, I know, I hate it. Um, they say, I'd love to, but I'm so busy. Um, but the sewing machine on the shirt says, so whatever. Okay, so this is the hang strap. So I'm folding the raw edges into the center. I'm leaving a bit of a gap and then I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to sew um, about an inch and a half in, down until there's an inch and a half. Orange door hinge. <laughs> Hopefully I can show you what that looks like. So it's on the folded edge, not the... So here's the edge where we folded it over. <laughs> Sandra, watermelon. Um, and then you can see these ends can lay flat and that's how you'll add your... Um, I guess it's like a faux rolled handles. Lauren, where do you measure the test squares on your pattern pieces? If I do it 100% Emily, it's perfect. Um, probably inside the box then. Fruit smoothie. <laughs> I love it. 
Okay, so these are the strap connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and fold those into the center. And this backpack does not have to be made with vinyl. You could use all cotton. I think the pattern is written for mostly cotton. And these can butt up against each other in the center because you're not gonna be folding them in half. And then I'm just top stitching along the outer edge on both sides. I'm procrastinating. What are you procrastinating on? Do it, just do it. <laughs> Banana Rama. Is this still going on? Do I need to do something? Ooh, Cindy, that's exciting. I didn't know you were making a Bonnie. All right, so we're gonna grab two of our simple square one inch buckles, whatever. You know I sell hardware, but I don't, I'm not good at names. Two of these square thingamabobbers. And you're gonna fold the edges of your strap over about an inch. So here's what you're looking at. <laughs> we just all got on the fruit train. <laughs> I love it. Um, and we're gonna add a rivet here and a rivet here. You could also just sew two straight lines, but I'm gonna quickly rivet. You can do it. Oh, Cindy, that's awesome. Okay, so one rivet done. So here's those pieces. I'm doing it. Doesn't sound like you're doing it. it. Sounds like you're complaining. Okay, so I'm folding my back panel in half and snipping the centers. And then I'm going to grab my ruler I cannot remember in the pattern what the distance is from the top, so I just kind of eyeball it. And then uh, one inch from the center, you're going to add one of your straps, and I face it with the raw end up. So that way when it's folded over, you've got a nice finished end. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this was actually my cat, Connor. He has back claws and he's not very careful when he walks around in the bedroom. So if he's like trying to wake us up or something, he'll accidentally claw us with his back claws. He did it out of hunger, not hate. Which I guess, depending on how hungry you are, is the same thing. Okay, so repeating that on the other side, um, raw end facing up, one inch from the center. So at this point, our straps are two inches from each other. And I'm just clipping them together at the top. <laughs> And then in between that, you're gonna add your grab handle. And I just kind of um, open up the bottom end and line it up in there. If your ends are uneven, I think that's okay. I just 
try to line it up so that my stitches are level. So let's say I've got it a little bit longer on one end, I'll just kind of bring it down so that my stitches are level on the grab handle and no one has to know you messed up. And it's okay, you're human. So I'm gonna really quick just baste all of that in place. And kind of lay flat your handle ends. Uh, good night, Bianca, or I'll see you later. Um, I haven't responded to your message because Facebook isn't loading pictures, but I do want to look at the shorts you made. Okay, so then we're gonna take this overlay piece and overlay the vinyl straps. I kind of like to do it so that half, so this half has the straps and then this half doesn't. So then we'll top stitch that on. And then I go down the side and across the bottom. Up the side until I'm about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch away from my top stitching. And then I'm gonna go across the top again to catch the straps one more time so that you've got basically three lines of stitching that are reinforcing that. And you can add a little bitty back stitch if you want as well. I'll show you what that looks like up close. So you can see caught twice as well as our basting stitch and here's what it looks like from the back as well so there's my top stitching there's my basting stitch and then there's my top stitching again <laughs> oh Tracy I took like three naps this morning okay so I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is in the pattern but I like to add my strap connectors an inch and a half from the bottom I think hers is like an inch, but it gets way too close to the bottom panel for my liking. Love to sew, hate to cut. I actually have a friend um, who cuts for me. I still enjoy cutting and interfacing, but it is nice to have someone to help so that I can get things done faster. So she helped me cut out all of these she did five total, took forever, but now I can make them. Okay, so I'm looping my strap connectors through my square rings, and I'm going to sew really close, <laughs> well, share her, um, really close to the hardware so that it doesn't slip around. Using my small workspace foot would come in handy, but I don't feel like changing it, so there's that. <laughs> Does she travel to Connecticut? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think she would. Plus, I need her. We got a lot of shows coming up. I think I'm going to be in Chicago twice. I'm going to be in Atlanta for Dragon Con. And then St. Louis area's um, Geek Craft Expo is July 26th and 27th. So that's basically what I'm working on. Prepping for is all of the above. <laughs> All right, so here are my strap connectors. Of course, yay, I'm so glad you guys like it. I was really nervous, Tracy can attest to film, but I was like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just sewing, it's fine. Okay, so here is my one and a half inch placement, and here is how I'm adding my strap connector. So at an angle, you're gonna have a little bit hanging off and then you're gonna top stitch that in place. So I'm lining up that bottom corner with the bottom edge. Yeah, the bottom corner with the one and a half inch marking and just kind of pivoting it at a 45 degree angle. 
And then I'm top stitching really close to that outside edge. I'm gonna base that in place. And then you're gonna repeat that with the other side, but in the opposite direction. And base in place. So that is what it'll end up looking like. They're a little flappy right now, but they'll get better. And now I'm going to base my vinyl on. The reason, um, the reason I do not like to add my foam first is because once you sew your foam to your back panel, it kind of um, weakens the foam at those points, so it'll start to like fold easily at those points. So I like to add it afterwards. Um, I don't know if that's in the pattern. I'm not gonna lie, I skimmed over. Most of the, most of the time I skim over a pattern. So if I mess up, that's my fault. <laughs> but now I'm going to baste it all into place. And just sew around the outer edge. Now my back panel is mostly finished. Um, we're just gonna add a strip of fabric to connect these with a little adjuster. So what I like to do, if you aren't going to be leaving your project for very long, is clipping my straps together. So kind of folding it up. And clipping it like that. And then adding it to my done pile. Oh man, I should have worked on this first. So now I can go ahead and work on my side panel and the pockets. Oops, shouldn't have done that. Yes. Okay, so there are long side panel pieces. I'm going to clip these with their matching lining pieces just really quick so I don't misplace them. These get attached to your zipper. And then there are longer rectangle pieces. They're a bit wider, I should say. And these are your side pockets. They're like the seven by six and a half. You're gonna lay your fabrics right sides together and clip it at the top or the seven inch side. Right sides together. And we're gonna sew across the top. I think it's like a half inch seam allowance. going to um, sew this. I'm going to fold it down and what I like to do is fold it down just a little bit so you can see the exterior from the lining side. You do not have to do this of course. I think it just gives it a little extra touch. So what I'm doing is I'm first pressing that seam up and then folding it down. Hey, Ben. Oh, I've got his place covered. All right, I'm moving it. There you go. Where you been? What are you doing? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Okay. 
So we're going to top stitch. Um, you could go around all sides, but I like to do just the top and then I'll do the bottom. Oh, Charlie, I love it. Hi, Deborah. That's exciting, Inga. I hope you, I want to see a picture. I enjoyed making that bag, but I feel like every time I made one, it got worse, especially on the side bits. Okay. Baste it along the bottom. Oh crap, yes, I do, dad, sorry. I'll give that to him later. Okay, so, oof, yeah. So I'm gonna fold this in half and clip the bottom center. Fold it in half, clip the bottom center. And then there are some measurements that are in the pattern. Um, I don't know them, I'm so professional. Uh, but you're going to fold the bottom in. So here's my lining, I'm folding that in. Ooh, Deborah, no, I, I do not, I don't know. I think it's like an inch, I think I'm doing too, yeah, there we go, I'm doing too small. I'm like my hands and my eyes, no, my brain, maybe not. Um, so you're adding a pleat to that pocket. So that's what that looks like. And then you're gonna base along the bottom. Yeah, Lana, I love this pattern. So there's that side pocket basted and we're just gonna repeat that for the other side. So I've got my fingers at, I think it's one inch uh, from the center, and you're just gonna bring those marks in. Just kind of pinch it like that. Ben, what, are you chewing on plastic? What are you? Hold on. Oh my God, cat. Okay. Sorry, he had like a poly mailer strip in his mouth. He likes to chew on him and I didn't want him to choke on it. Okay, so fold it in to make this pleat. And I kind of like to try and keep it pretty straight along the bottom as I'm sewing it. So just kind of fan out one side. Now we're going to grab uh, other pieces. We're gonna set these aside. So these are our side pockets. They get attached and then you can like fit stuff in them. Pretty, pretty cool. So setting those aside. And now we're going to grab our four zipper pieces. So I cut these all to the same size. In the pattern, she has them cut to different sizes. I don't, I don't do it like that, I'm lazy. So I'm going to grab the front zip, the smaller one. I'm gonna start with that. I'm going to iron my zipper. Um, I've been wanting to use zipper by the yard for this, but I haven't found any zipper pulls that I really enjoy using um, because I think that using two zip pulls on this bag would be ideal. Uh, 
I also haven't done a lot of research on them. I've been a little busy. So I'm gonna lay my zipper face down on top of the exterior fabric. Grab some clips. I'm using a much longer zipper than it calls for, so I'm not really worried about centering it or making sure it's either which way. Um, so if you'd like to, you can baste your zipper in place. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay my lining face down on top of that. So right now it's um, your main fabric right side up, your zipper face down, and your lining face down. I'm just clipping it together. So a beautiful zipper sandwich. My stitch length is at 4.5 and I'm just going to sew using like a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and then I'm going to press this from the lining side so that I don't melt my vinyl. and then I'm gonna fold the lining over and you're just gonna top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the zipper all the way down through the lining also this is where I'm starting to differ from the pattern suggestions making sure to pull that apart Um, if you're a fan of drop-in linings, uh, there's no reason you would need to make these changes. But if you're not a fan of drop-in linings, then do as I say. Yeah, she does. It's not hard to make your own. I just need to find more zipper pulls. Okay, so there is what one part of our zipper panel looks like, and I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. If your fabric is directional, you're gonna wanna make sure you keep them the right direction. But I'm gonna line up my exterior, the bottom edge with the bottom edge of the other side of the zipper panel. And then I'm gonna flip it over and then do the same with my lining. so much okay and then I'm going to top stitch this all this is um, vinyl that I'm working with it's vinyl from Joann's it's called their whisper vinyl in tan I believe standard time. Oh, hey, Ben. Let me add some more water to it. I was thinking about getting a water purifier for the basement um, sink faucet because I'm gonna use that one for my iron, and I know that using like, regular tap water can ruin your iron. So, I don't know, I haven't decided. Okay, so my lining is pressed, and I'm gonna fold that open and top stitch all the way down. In my Facebook video, I thought you had to do it like half an inch from the top, and I've learned this is not the case. It works just fine if you don't. But you wanna make sure you're like an eighth of an inch away from the zipper. No, it's fine. That was, what, what? <laughs> okay, don't 
do it again. Um, Jacqueline, sorry, no, I didn't see your comment. Um, I want, uh, so I don't dislike the ones from My Handmade Space, but I just don't feel like they're as strong as some of these. Hi, Gail. Um, so I want some that look like that, but are that um, metal-like or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, top stitch. Eventually, I think I'd like to design some to sell as well, but then I feel like people would want me to sell zipper by the yard, and I'm just not, not ready for that kind of commitment, you guys. I'm just not, I can't do it. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our lining panel attached to the exterior panel. And now comes the really fun part, you guys. And if you haven't liked this video already, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, please and thank you. It just makes me feel better. Okay. Bags by Cat, she has some amazing, ooh. Katie, I'm kind of self-taught, I guess. Okay, so my lining is going to get clipped to the lining only. So I'll show you what that looks like. You're just gonna separate those two panels. And clip that together, leaving the vinyl or exterior off. And we're gonna sew it from the other side, my bad. Oh, very cool. So you're going to fold this out of the way. You're going to sew half inch seam allowance just until this seam. And then you're going to lift your needle up or you can pull it off. And then you're going to flip this up and sew down this way. And I'll show you what that looks like. Just kind of flip everything out of the way nice and straight. Okay. So then there's this little jump thread that I'm going to clip. Uh, yes, this is an industrial walking foot machine. And then here's what it looks like from this side. <laughs> I can watch inter uninterrupted. And you can just clip that little thread so long as you've back stitch. So we're going to repeat that with the other, the exterior side panel. Hi Leah. We're just going to lay that next to the vinyl. Clip that all together. And then when we sew it from the other side, we're just going to lift the lining out of the way and sew. And this is not my technique. This is Jessica Cruzan um, from Soda Kind. She has a YouTube channel. She did a video like this where she made the Betty Bowler bag a non drop in lining, and this is the technique she used. So I do know that source and I will credit it. So just gonna go ahead and clip my jump thread here. I'm back here, which isn't super necessary, but just so you get the idea. And then when you pull this apart, you'll see there's just this one little gap that you sew down and across. And then your side panels are completely free. So I'll go ahead and top stitch. Um, and at this point you could add a little piece of vinyl into there. Um, for people to use as kind of a, a grab for when they're zipping and unzipping the zipper. I was talking to my friend Jabby yesterday. Was it yesterday? I don't know what day it was. Um, and she mentioned that there was a backpack pattern she liked, but she would prefer it had 
something for people to grab when they're zipping and unzipping. I was like, oh, that's not a bad idea. So. Okay, so there's what that looks like. And if you wanted to, you could start your top stitching here, go down and around and back up. Up to you. And then we repeat with the other side. And this is the method I used on the um, Bell baby bag as well. Laying that other side panel on, clipping it from the opposite side. And then of course, if you need to mark out your seam allowance so it stays consistent, you can do that. Trim a jump thread. Okay, now you want to pull your little zipper pull into the bag. And then you'll just top stitch right across here. You could even add uh, like a little D-ring so that if someone wanted to um, clip their zipper pull to that so that way if no one can like steal anything, open it up. I've seen those like trigger clasp zippers. Those are really cool. Um, so the reason that you do not want to top stitch across this entire thing is then your lining and your exterior cannot be separated. So if you wanted to top stitch further, um, you just want to make sure you give yourself at least um, three quarters of an inch, but I'm not sure you'd really like um, the way it looked. So you want to make sure that those layers are separated. That's my reasoning. So now I'm going to um, attach my side pockets. So I'm gonna fold my lining out of the way. You can even like clip it up so that you know that it's out of the way. Kind of fold it up like that. I'm gonna grab one of my side pockets. I'm gonna line up the bottom edge. Use some clips. And then you're just gonna kind of, um, if you've made the Annette bag, you know that you just kind of match your pocket up to the side edge. Again, make sure your lining is out of the way. So you just kind of match that side edge and clip. And there is your side pocket and you're just gonna sew that around in a U shape. Again, make sure you move your lining completely out of the way. Otherwise, you know, you're defeating the purpose of what we're doing here. <laughs> Watch me like accidentally sew my lining at some point. Okay, so there is my side pocket. And then I'm gonna repeat that with the other side. Start with clipping the bottom into place. And then 
and matching up those sides. Okay, so now your zipper panel with pockets. The pockets, of course, are optional. You do not have to add them, but it is complete. I'm gonna line up the bottom edges to find the center of the zipper panel and make some snips. make sure it caught on the lining too. My lining always seems to be just a tiny bit shorter because of that waterproof canvas. Okay, if you've got extra threads that are bugging you, clip them. Take a deep breath, um, take a drink, get some water, whatever you're into because it's about to get tricky. It's tricky to sew around these curves all right. I don't know, I love that song. Okay. So front panel, you're going to ask why I don't add the pocket. I read the directions for the pocket. It's a great pocket. The one thing that irked me is you work so hard to make this bag have no raw edges. And then in the lining, you just like cut this piece and then it's got raw edges. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just never made them, but there is a way around those raw edges. I just haven't done it. Plus I'm lazy. Okay, so finding the centers of my main panel, I'm gonna go ahead and add my nameplate really quick. I'm gonna add it along the bottom. from the bottom. Okay. And for my exterior fabric, it is linen cotton canvas from Spoonflower. And I added woven fuse and fused my foam to it. So nameplate attached. Yes, yeah, Cindy, you can absolutely just put a zipper pocket on front. Uh, most of the ones that I've done, I've added like a zipper pocket up here. I've added a side zipper pocket. You could add one diagonally with a little flap on it. I've done, there's so many different zipper pocket variations you could do. So whatever you're into. Okay, so I'm going to separate my lining from my exterior panel. Just kind of pull it apart a little bit. So it, basically it's hiding your zipper and you're going to start with the center curves, your little center snips and clip, clip, clip. And I like to just clip all the way around the outer edge and then line up the bottom because more often than not, my bottom has a little bit of an overhang and I just clip that off. I'm not worried about it. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So hopefully you can see I've got this little bit of an overhang and I'm just gonna cut that off. And it's mostly caused by me just not using 100% the right seam allowance. But since I know how to fix it, I'm not too worried about it. Okay. So here's what it's gonna look like from the top and we're gonna sew around this edge. Avoiding that lining fabric. My 
my stitch length set to four. Half inch seam allowance. Nice and slow around that curve. I do not have any foam in my zipper panels. I think that's just too much foam, unless you're using a cotton fabric, but even then I might suggest two layers of woven fuse or Decaville. I know one of my friends said that all she used was Decaville in her bag and she loves the way it turned out, so. Follow your interfacing intuition. And then I'm going to trim that down. And then if you just want to double check what it looks like, you can flip it. Oops, you can punch yourself in the face with your bag. So here's what we're looking at. Okay, so we're gonna flip that back and we're gonna grab our lining panel. This is where I like to add the one without a zipper pocket. I like the zipper pocket on the back. Um, so my lining panel, I'm gonna fold that in half. I'm gonna add a two center snips, one at the bottom, one at the top. Why I don't do this like all at once at the beginning, I don't know. Okay. So I'm just gonna flip my lining panel up away from the lining. Clip that top snip and just kind of work my way around. Please keep in mind I have made quite a few of these so far, so if it seems like this is taking no time at all and it's taking you forever, you, you just, you gotta practice. Great. So there is that all clipped up and I'm just gonna sew around that U shape. And here you can use the same seam allowance as you did on the outside or you can come in just a tiny little bit so it's a nice tight fit. to trim that down. Um, Jacqueline, no problem. So I did make the Denver once before. I had this really fun idea to use like quilted foam and um, when I made the bag I hated it so much. I don't understand the hype around that bag. Um, I will probably make one with just leather or even just vinyl to see how I like it. Um, and maybe like an accent fabric on those side zippers. Um, I'm really upset with myself because I just threw away the pattern that I printed off and stuff. I was like, never again. And I like crumpled it up. And then she released it and I was like, well, great. Um, I will, I do have plans to do a video on it. I'm not sure when. Okay, and so at this point, I just kind of double check. And 
now we're going to attach the exterior fabric. Yeah, and I, I fully get that everyone has bags they like and everyone has bags they don't, but if people want help making the pattern, who am I to say, I hate this so much, no one should make it. Um, Cause everybody's a little bit different, that's okay. So I probably will make one. Um, I might try to make it the August, July, June, July. I've already done July, so I might try to make it the August swoon video, we'll see. Okay, so just repeating the steps for the outside as we did the other exterior and the lining. But now we've got these connectors. Oh no, Kim, yeah, I will absolutely make it. Um, just because I don't really prefer it doesn't mean it's not a great bag, you know? So I absolutely do have plans to do it. Oh, because it was a drop-in? Yeah. Drop-ins are not hard. I mean, no, sorry. Drop-ins are hard. <laughs> um, I don't like them, but again, just because I don't like something doesn't mean there isn't a place for it or it doesn't mean other people shouldn't. So, um, so here is where my connector is. I am going to be sewing half an inch from the outer edge and I'm going to just do a backstitch here, a backstitch here, and then keep going. And then when we trim down the seam allowance, I'm only gonna trim down under it and above it. I'm not gonna trim down through it because then you're, again, weakening your strap connector. So we're gonna sew around the top edge. Um, and what's funny about the Denver is when I was out in Chicago, I think I saw a few people who had bags like it um, and they are quite slouchy. So I wanna say that that was my problem. I used too much interfacing. I know, Alyssa, they're so fun. Um, and I plan on selling mine for about 95 at shows, depending on the pocket options. Otherwise it'll probably, this, like this one here will probably be um, 90. And then other ones with front pockets will be 95. I usually charge like $5 per pocket. I do want to add like a slip pocket inside though, and I'd love to make one with piping. Okay, let's just... And then make sure your square ring is not folded in your seam allowance like this one was. Whew, that was close. Backstitch, backstitch, backstitch. <laughs> okay, so you can see here is my strap connector. I'm starting at the bottom and trimming in that same angle. And then, whoops going along the other side here. Trimming. This bag would be super cute with piping along that curve as well. Just kind of keep it away from your strap connector so there's not too much bulk. Do it one more time. Okay, so I've got my zipper pocket open. I'm gonna fold that piece in half because I didn't before and mark my snips. Snip my centers. Push everything inside.
Okay. So we've got that all clipped together and I'm gonna sew it. I don't know why I lay the out like the outsides flat and sew these on a curve. It, I don't think it matters. It just seems to fit better. I don't really know. Josie, you're fun. Back at ya. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, so now we've got our exterior and our lining, but they're joined at the zipper. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna grab our exterior bottom. Um, this is very poorly fused, as you can see. Uh, maybe I was tired, maybe I didn't do it, I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm gonna trim my Decoville down a little bit more. Instead of using foam, on the bottom panel, I prefer to use Decaville Heavy, just one layer cut to half an inch smaller along all sides. And um, sewing it that way, just kind of like a regular purse handbag would be. Um, just because I think all that layer of foam, it's hard to keep everything straight. So this works much better for me. I don't know about you. I'm feeling 22. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, folding in half to mark centers, hot dog and hamburger style. You could add purse feet if you wanted to, or I've seen people that just add a few rivets um, just to give it a little something. I, I don't know, you do you. So I'm going to line up my center snips. So there should be one on the front panel. Clip that in place. There should be one on the back panel. Clip that in place. And then if you made your side pockets correctly, you should be able to find, find um, your center snip. And line that up as well. This side is my long side, so I'm just going to trim it down. There's what that looks like, and then you're just gonna kind of work the curves around the bag. And just kind of pinch them in place. And then if you need to staple some parts, you could definitely staple. Keep in mind, if you're using the stapler technique, it could kind of scratch your machine up, do whatever you'd like. So there it is attached. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
and uh, I'll just use this foot. I've been using my small workspace foot um, for things like this, but it doesn't hold the layers as well as I'd like. So I'll deal. So when you, you're getting around those curves, just kind of keep your needle in and reposition. And sew a few stitches, keep your needle in, reposition. Make sure your lining is out of the way. In, reposition. Make sure all your layers are lined up. I'm not going to trim my excess seam allowance. I think it'll be fine. So now what you can do, there's two options. If you used a lot of interfacing, you could go ahead and birth your bag right now through this bottom hole. Um, if you didn't use too much interfacing, you could just fully add your bottom panel and birth it through the zippered pocket. Um, or you can do what I'm about to do which is leave a hole in the bottom lining as well as your birthing pocket. Yeah, it's not easy to use all the interfacings with um, an industrial or with the home machine. I wish it were. Um, I think the 2200 QVP mini or something like that is probably the, the best I've seen for at home. I know Steve was mentioning a lot of people get them, but I don't really have an extra amount of money laying around to buy one to test out, but it's something I would love to do for you guys. because I think it's nice to have the option to kind of move around with it. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to clip my curves together. So I'm starting, I've got all of my centers clipped together. Flipping my bottom panel on. Okay. Uh, the Juki 2200 QVP Mini or something like that, or the 220 QVP. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> yes, that's so true. Uh, while making a bag made for leather. But anyway, um, so I've left this hole open where my zipper pocket is. And we're gonna sew around the curve up until we get to those side seams. So it's a little bit bigger than our birthing hole zipper pocket. So it gives us a little more room. But if you think I can just get it through the zipper pocket, then feel free to just sew this up and then you have one thing to sew when your bag is birthed. But with the layers of foam and vinyl, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it through just the zipper pocket. So I'm gonna leave my birthing hole in the bottom open as well.
going to trim my excess seam allowance along the bottom, except for where I have not sewn, because technically that's not seam allowance, it's just fabric at the moment. Now we're going to birth it through here. So you want to kind of check to make sure that your zipper is unzipped. If it's not, you can kind of slide your finger across it and unzip it inside. I'm going to grab the bottom of my bag first. Uh, I'm going to trim that. I lied. I want to trim this. It's just a lot going on oh okay Leslie good to know yeah I wasn't sure if it was stronger than the Juki 2000 QI which is what I have okay Gonna grab the lining, the bottom, exterior, not the lining, my bad, my bad. Pull that through. I strongly urge you not to make one with all glitter vinyl. Hooey! That will not be fun for you. <laughs> Alright, so I'm pushing out the bottom so I can get it to sit nice and flat. This is where I want to double check, make sure that I've caught all my stitches. Caught all my seams, I should say, not my stitches. Give your... Um, strap connectors a little bit of a tug kind of push out everything okay it looks good so now I'm gonna grab my pocket lining my zipper pocket lining pull it out so you can see where it's open and then we're gonna reach in and we're gonna grab the unsewn lining So we've got just this little chunk here. We're going to grab where the center snips line up. I'm gonna mark those. So this is like a no brainer almost. We know that it's centered. And then we can just slowly pinch the rest of the fabrics together and clip. Clip and sew across the top. backstitch backstitch and so forward okay so then this is all sewn up we can trim down that seam allowance that's no longer just fabric lining fabric back into the bag kind of push everything together make sure everything at all sits nicely and then pull out the lining again that zipper pocket and we're just gonna sew that closed um, Lisa I have so many different scissors um, the ones I keep here to cut seam allowance, they're not great. They're just 
Fiskars. Um, but I have a really nice pair of Kai scissors that my friend Nikki bought me for my birthday. I love those. Um, and they're really smooth, really nice. So if I'm cutting a lot, I'll use those, but only for cutting and interfacing. I'm gonna grab one of my name tags, pop that in there. in and we're not quite finished yet. I'm gonna switch my thread back to black. I should have done this prior to but I think I still would have had to switch so it's okay. okay. Again, sticking my lining inside so you can see that bottom panel fits a lot nicer than if it were all foam. You can see here you can add your water bottles, what have you. Okay, so I'm unclipping that. I'm gonna change my thread really quick. Ever since I changed my belt on this machine, it's been sewing a lot smoother. And um, I'm able to wind a bobbin now. It is a marine vinyl. I'm not sure if it's similar to My Punk Broidery's promo. It's called Whisper Vinyl from Joann's. So I need two one inch sliders and then um, she uses like a webbing for this step. I am going to use these pre-made crossbody straps that I sell, or not crossbody, um, these are pre-made tote bag straps that are cut to like 24 inches. So what I do is I will take my slider and one end and I'm going to slide it through the center bar 
and fold it over so that there's no raw edges. And I'm gonna add two lines of parallel stitching across the top. Repeat that on the other strap as well. Fold that over. And then you can use your snips or your thread zapper. My thread zapper, I need to change the batteries, I think. I'm gonna sew down that one more time. My um, foot was up. I did not sew securely. Can't have that. Not on a backpack. All right, so now we've got our adjusting straps ready to go. So what we're gonna do Hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. Hopefully I can show it. Okay, so we've got the slide adjuster facing us, but we're gonna turn it around so that the slide adjuster is no longer facing us and we can see this folded over piece. And we're going to slide that through the back of our slide adjuster, or our square ring. Okay, and then Slide this through the bottom and then through the top. So now it's a slide adjuster along this side. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to repeat it. And then what happens with this is it gets looped around this square ring here. And at this point, you can kind of um, modify it to whoever it's going to. Since it's 24 inches, that's plenty for arms. Um, but what I've done is I've folded it over so there's no raw edges. And then I'm just going to clip that in place for now. And we'll repeat that with the other side. And then if you haven't already thumbs up this video, thumbs it up, y'all. Just one little button. <laughs> okay. So maybe if I lay this down this way, it'll help you kind of see better. Um, so right now facing up at me is this folded over section. And that's facing up. And I'm going to take my square ring and I'm gonna fold this through the back side. So it's laying flat and we're coming up through it. And slide it as far down as you need to to make sure everything is straight. So here is my folded over end and I'm going to loop it down through one side and then push all this down back through the top to make a sliding loop. Mm -hmm. And then you'll repeat. So here's my slider. We're gonna go through the top, the front of this one, through the back, and fold it over and clip it down. And at this point, I just kind of double checked that I folded them over evenly, and I definitely have not. And then again, I'm gonna do two lines of stitching, so. It's got this little adjustable part, which if you're making for someone much smaller, you know, you're, you're going to want to adjust that. But there's 
that much room for adjustment. So let me go ahead and sew that down and show you what we're looking at. And what's nice about the straps that I have, I'm not sure if I have a bunch in stock at the moment, but uh, these are made with folded canvas instead of canvas webbing or the polypropylene webbing, they're not gonna fray since it's a woven fabric. Um, although I'm sure canvas webbing is fine too. I just am totally burned from polypropylene because I had like 60 totes that I'd made with it that were all damaged and I had to replace. Um, so yeah, that sucked. Even with a hot knife, it happened. So there's what that looks like. try to move the camera a little bit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you can get a better view. Um, and I'll definitely update this video with a link where to purchase it. Oof. Those pockets are uneven. I don't know what happened there. Uh, we're going to call it a design feature so that your water bottle is a little bit more covered. I need to put something else on the other side. <laughs> Tracy, no. Okay, I'm gonna try to move this so you can see what it looks like on my back. Nope, that's not gonna work. So it's cute. Oh my god they're so uneven that's my bad wow they're like a whole inch off <laughs> Woof. whoops 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 and then you've got your zipper pocket along the back so yeah thanks guys for hanging out um I really like this pattern. I would really like to upsize this bag pattern. I think even like adding, I do not have an affiliate link for the pattern, but thank you for asking. Um, even adding like four inches to the length of the bag would make it so you could add even bigger water bottles or like a change of clothing or something like that. Um, you could add a secret pocket back here or even a slip pocket for like a phone some easy access um, so there's all different ways you could kind of make this pattern a little different and work for what you like to make so I hope you guys enjoyed um, if you're watching this video no longer live I apologize but thank you for being here I'll see you guys next time bye oh yeah there it is